or I gotta find the camera now. Hold on. Oh, there it is. Got it. Okay. Who went and changed all of this? You know, this was working fine before. That was that was my that was my problem last week. It's it's the state ID that requires you to change your password and and you can't MS team doesn't know that this the state government computer won't let you sign in unless you change your password. So it's just that that the, the the state's computer requires you to change your password again I think way too too often and if you don't change it it won't let you log in basically. Okay. Well you, let's uh, why don't we why don't we uh, why don't we get started now the chips on the phone. All right do we have everyone else Neil and Brad and yep. Yeah, we got Neil, and Brad, and uh, and uh, and you, and me, and then Chip by phone, and we have Chip Updike, and I, and we don't believe anybody's going to be here for Licking County, right? School, Susan. Yes, that's correct. They don't have to attend. There's a no objection, and they're aware of that. But we do have someone here for the second elevator case. Right, I heard that. Okay, all right, let's. Uh, I'll go back. Let's go live here. Um, OK, good morning. Uh, it's it's uh, June 15th. It's 2020 and the board is convened to consider the first case on our docket, which was scheduled for 830. And I'll note for the record, uh, Sam, that it's 839 uh, and it is case number. Uh, it's an elevator division case and it's case number 20 hyphen zero zero five four uh, and it deals with an adjudication dealing with the licking uh, heights high school located in Patascala and the elevator divisions uh, uh, adjudication number is noted on the docket. <clears throat> um, it's my understanding um, that uh, from Susan, our executive board secretary, that uh, uh, no one will be attending from the Licking uh, Heights High School uh, or the school board, um, but I'll, I'll invite uh, uh, them to uh, enter an appearance if in fact they are here. Is there anybody here representing the Licking County School Board? Um, OK, um, Mr. Updike, would you enter your appearance, please? Uh, Char Charles Updike, Chief Elevator Inspector for the state of Ohio. Uh, good morning. It's been a long time since we've all seen each other. Yes, it has. Uh, uh, let, let me note here for the record, uh, Chip, you're aware that uh, Board Member Welch is appearing by phone as opposed to interacting with us right this minute uh, on the on the MS teams. Otherwise, uh, are you comfortable proceeding in that format? Yes, sir. OK, um, Sam, would you uh, well, uh, Chip, would you uh, stand, raise your right hand? You swear or to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. And, and and before before we hear from you, Mr. Updike, I just want to make sure Chip Welch is on. Can you hear me, Chris? Chip? Yeah, I'm, I can I'm hear sorry. you. I'm trying to log in right now. No, I'm talking Chip Welch. Okay, all right, Mr. Updike, you have the floor. Uh, this particular location, Licking Licking Heights uh, Board of Education, is requesting a variance for the handrail height on a vertical platform lift. Typically, the ASME standards require 42 inch platform height. This particular unit is going on a stage in the existing handrail height for the stage to keep the audience from falling into the stage pit is 32 inches and for appearance and aesthetic and as well as audience viewing, they want to reduce that height to 32 inches. I've seen this done before. I had no objection, but I did ask for a letter from the local building department to make sure that they weren't they didn't have any issues because some locations have actually made them raise the height of the stage, which means that they have to raise the height of all of the uh, chairs and everything else in the audience. But uh, I did get that letter. I'm assuming Susan's forwarded that to you guys, and I have no objection. Um, well, we have. Do we have anything for this month? I'm trying to remember. Susan. Thanks. I'm sorry. What do we look? What are we looking for? I, I'm, I don't. Do we? Well, maybe I'll ask my colleagues. Do, do we have a letter from Laura Hunt or uh, someone? I from do. Here? I do not, Chip. I do not have that letter from the uh, Licking County. 
Okay, I can forward that to you. I'm looking at it right now. It it okay. is it's attached to the paperwork you sent to me. Uh, that the very I bottom see. half. What I have is what the board has. Hang on a second. I've got your, we've got your adjudication notice of the appeal, and then an mm -hmm. email thread. Um. Oh. That's that's what I'm referring to. The email. If you look at the bottom, it's Laura Hunt from it Laura Hunt. It says enclosed as approval. Okay, we have that. That that that's already in the record. Um, so we we don't need to have a, a separate letter. I think that's for you, Chip. Up to, I, to answer. Uh, no, the email correspondence was fine with me. I mean, I can request a, a second letter if that's what you would like. Well, let me let me ask Mr. Snyder. Do you, do you think having that email correspondence as as part of the record is sufficient notice, or should we request a separate letter? Well, she says hello, Mike. Uh, now let's see where. So point someone point me to where Ms. Hunt gives the sign off. Is that in the April 28th email? I believe so, yes. She goes, uh, our opinion, the 36 inch high gate, which matches the height of the adjacent stern wall, meets the intent of the code and therefore approved by the department. Right. Okay, I see that. That's, uh, yeah, 323 p.m. April 28th. You see that, Paul? It's uh, bottom of page two of four of the thread. Oh, yeah, I see it. There I go. And I, that probably is, is satisfactory, isn't it? To the members of the board. That, that's fine with me. That, okay. I'm fine with that. I'm fine All with right. it. Uh, any any questions? Any further questions of Mr. Updike or any questions of Mr. Updike? Uh, if not, is there a motion? Um, what I might do, Mr. Chair, is I would like to actually add another condition, if that's all right. Okay. Um, uh, condition upon the lift shall be operated under direct supervision of a teacher or school school personnel with signage posted to the satisfaction of the chief elevator inspector. Mr. Updike, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, that's fine, um, but the problem is the railing is when it's not in use. Because the stage height is 36 inches now, and now this lift will take a portion of that handrail out and put this lift there. So the lift height stationary is 36 inches as well as the stage height running it up and down i guess there is a concern there if you're you're up the three feet of rise that it goes up and you fall off that way but right it's it's actually the stationary time that the most concern because the actual stage lift can go down six to eight feet so you would have a drop of 68 feet up six six to eight feet down into the orchestra pit when the lift is stationary but that's fine. These are mostly attended operated anyways. So I, that, I, think, I figure that they are, but I, yeah. mean, I, I thought it would be worthwhile putting a condition there just just so that we, you know, I'm sure the, the, the custodial staff is going to be there operating it or or the, the, the band instructor is going to have, right. have that. So yeah, again, I just, I just thought it was worthwhile having it in there. I mean, if, if you're disagree. opposed to it, I, I could take it off, but I'm gonna, I don't think it could hurt. Nope, I'm not opposed to it. Okay. Um, gentlemen of the board. I'm fine with it. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Okay. I'm fine with it as well. Okay. Uh, with that condition, um, do we have a motion? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um,
for uh, Board of Building Appeals uh, case number 20-0054. The appellant is Licking Heights School District uh, for the premises Licking Heights High School at 4101 Summit Road, Pataskala, Ohio 43062. Uh, the appellee is Charles Updike, Chief Elevator Inspector uh, for the State of Ohio and Adjudication Order Number E2020-66604. Uh, I move to grant the variance subject to the condition uh, previously read in the record and again noting the no objection to the Chief Elevator Inspector. That motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Neil Gary. Uh, all those in favor uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Um, the uh, variance is those conditions uh, on a five to nothing basis. Uh, we'll move on into the second elevator case and let Mr. Updike uh, off the hook at this point in time. I hear an echo. Does anybody else hear an echo? I hear it. Hmm. I don't think it's mixed. Oh, it is maybe. I don't know how to handle it. Um, let's just try this. Um, I'm uh, second elevator case is case number 20 hyphen 0057 and, uh, unit four of the Bay Villa located in Lakeside, Herbalhead, Ohio. And the division of uh, uh, the elevator divisions adjudication numbers noted on our docket. I understand that there is a representative here from the appellant. Would you state your full name? Spell your last name in the capacity on a representative way in which you're here on behalf of owner, the owner of talent. Do the same thing with the elevator division official, and I'll have an oath administered. Do we? Uh, I know we have somebody here from Bay Villa. Are you? Maybe she got knocked out. If, if you're uh, attending by phone. Um, you might be muted and you need to type a star six into your phone and you can unmute yourself. Hmm. She was here. Um, if there's a number 440-812-9660. We need yes. you to type in star six in your phone to unmute yourself. She's the other number, 216-695-0291, I believe. Yeah, she's It's Kelsey. Okay. I probably can't unmute, can I? No, we can't Susan, unmute. Susan, can you send me another invite, please? I'm logged in as a guest. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 216-695-0291 needs to type in star six into your phone to unmute yourself. Hmm. Yeah, obviously having some difficulty. It's too early to, to move on to the next case, unless the extra real parties are here. Hey, Paul, I'm getting some kind of master screen on my monitor here. I don't know if that's intentional. Yeah, so, it's so am I. <laughs> what, what is it? It, it? It's like you're navigating the screen that's showing up for us. Oh, I see this on Paul. Does it say Paul's desktop? It sounds like somebody is sharing. It says what I've got. Yeah, just, it, yeah, I just, just left. Stop sharing. Just left. There we go. Yeah, I just left. So we have D Bowman guest also. You want me to want me to put up a real quick sign that says, hey, if you're attending by phone, type in star six. <laughs> well, yeah, why now on the uh, Bay Villa representative, I have a, the mute with a circle around it. I mean, the yeah, it looks like the microphone's muted, but with a circle instead of just a line through it, a circle around it and a line through it. 
What, what, Beverly, I wonder what that means. Um, I'm not seeing it on my side. I'm going to. Uh, Hi, Jim. Good morning. Oh, all, all right. right. Hi, Jim. Sweet Jesus. So, is anybody, are, 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 you, are, are the other members looking at the 216 number on their screen? Or is that just Paul and I as presenters? Uh, that's just us. So, I'm typing up a little uh, letter. But do you see the icon? Do you see the, the muted yeah, icon? Yeah, I see it, Carl. Okay, which is different than like Susan's muted icon right now. She should be able to hear us and Hello? hit star six. I, I, I know, I, I've said it a few times. I haven't heard though. Well, I mean, we could adjourn this case. If, uh, so, so this is Stacy Stevenson. Are you waiting for me or someone no. else? No, Stacy, okay. we're on another case, but you're next. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, well, uh, Stacey, let's... is every is everybody here for your case on your side? Correct. Mr. Bauman and and Stacy Stevenson is are here for um, twenty zero zero five eight. I can email Elsie and let her know she needs done. Yeah, let's let's do that. Mr. Updike, are you okay waiting for a few minutes? Hold on. Let me let me throw this up real quick. Um, so I could share it and that way somebody could see it if they are not listening on their phone. Good morning. Who was that? Good morning. Hi, this is Bob Rohde with Ohio Elevator and Lift. Okay, with uh, I'm logged in regard with regard to the Bayview Villas. Number okay. Four. Oh, very good. Yeah, okay. uh, we must have had some kind of little confusion. I was watching online and I didn't realize that. I Kelsey sent me a link to watch it and I did not realize that you guys well, were were so looking first to actually be in there. Kelsey is Kelsey. It is uh, muted and we're trying to get her to unmute. But were you going to okay. present or was she going to present? Or um, I think that she would have been, but I, I'm not sure. From what I understood, we, we didn't really need to attend this. And That's I was just kind of you know, watching, just right. watching to see how it works. We, okay. we, we just need to have somebody from the appellant's side to be able to present the case, that's all. If, if there's anything to present. Our last elevator case, uh, uh, the appellant did not appear. The elevator division. Okay. Yes, so I mean, I, I guess if, if there's a question, if you need anything from me, I, I'd be glad to answer. Okay, so you'd be willing to go ahead, go forward with the, the hearing, uh, even though Kelsey's not patched or has some technical difficulties. Can he contact Kelsey by other means? to let her know that she needs to unmute. I wonder if, if it might actually be me, because I, I, I logged in from a link. If Kelsey may not be out there. Uh, we I heard from her earlier. Her. Well, we heard from yeah. her earlier. Isn't she a 216 number? Yes. I mean, I, I think we could go ahead and hear the case. Um, and if we need to hear from Kelsey, we can, uh, we, you know, we could adjourn and make sure that she's patched in. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with that. We have someone that's from the appellee on on the line. I'm sure she wants to present. I don't feel like that'd be like saying, hey, you know, the the, uh, the convicted person's out, out outside in the hallway. We're going to proceed with this court case, even though he's out in the hallway. Uh, that, that, believe it or not, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> there are a number of trials in abstention. Um, okay, I'm going to okay, try. Let's to give her. Let's give her a few minutes then. Or we can move on to the Ashtabula uh, case while we have those parties that are available.
Yeah, we've had the notice up there long enough. I mean, look, I... You know what, I, Carl, if you don't care, I'm going to call her. I'm going to call the number. Okay. okay. I'll be right back. This is a coffee refill. Of course, it goes to voicemail, and the voicemail's full. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to text her. Um, Paul. Yes. If I can mention this, this is an elevator case, and in the past, whether it was in person or not, uh, if Chip had no objection and he stated so in writing, neither party was even required to attend, and that's what I've been communicating. However, you all. The, there's two individuals, one muted, Kelsey's muted and won't unmute. The other gentleman, they're both from Ohio Elevator and Lyft, which is who is the applicant or the requester of the appeal. So I would think, can't either one of them speak? Well, I, that, I, I would defer to the Ohio Elevator uh, representative, but if he's comfortable going forward, that was what I was saying. I think we can do that. Yes, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. OK, and your name again, please. My name is Bob, and the last name is Rody, R-O-H, D is in David, D Thank is you. in Edward. Uh, let's make sure we go back on the record so the Sam knows. Right, OK. Uh, Sam, back on the record, please. My name is Bob Rody, R-O-H, D-E, and I'm with Ohio Elevator and Lyft. Thank you very much. And um, Mr. Updike? Yes, sir. Did you enter your appearance? Charles Updike, Chief Elevator Inspector for the state of Ohio. Okay, um, so Mr. Rohde, Mr. Updike, I'd indulge you to eat, if you would, uh, the formality of standing, raise your right hand, and our court stenographer, Sam, will administer an oath. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, um, so, so the case is called, and uh, off record, we heard from Mr. Rossi that he was comfortable uh, proceeding, even though one of his colleagues was having some technical difficulties. Uh, I do see her phone number up on the screen, um, but we've done our best to try to get her uh, patched in. Um, how do we wish to proceed, Mr. Brody? Do you want to do you want to proceed, or do you want Mr. Updike to give us the to give all of the uh, issues uh, that play here? Either way, it's up to you. If Mr. Updike would like to proceed, I'd be comfortable with that. Okay, go ahead, please. Uh, this is Charles Updike, Chief Elevator Inspector for the State of Ohio. Uh, the owner is seeking a variance on a project for a vertical platform lift to exceed 14 feet. The travel due to the, the uh, new building floor to ceiling height will be 18 feet. Uh, there are other projects in this vicinity with, I'm assuming, the same owner with the same uh, type of uh, installs, and I have no objection. The, the, the actual newer, the newer codes that are being rewritten for the ASME 18, which is the ADA compliant lifts, are proposing to raise that limit to 21 feet. So it's headed down the pike eventually where they'll raise the, the, the total height of the, of the lifts to more than 14 feet. That's an older code. So again, he's wanting to run at 18 feet versus 14 feet, and I have no objection. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rohde, uh, in light of the elevator division's uh, sentiments, do you have any comments that you'd like to uh, make for purposes of the board's evaluation? I have nothing to add. Okay, I didn't think so. Um, gentlemen, any questions of either Mr. Rohde or Mr. Updike? Chip, uh, I assume we have no conditions. No, it's a fully enclosed lift. The passengers won't know any difference whether they go travel an extra four feet or not. Okay. Didn't we do a variance on one of these units a couple of years ago for the yes. same complex? Yes. That's what I thought. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, Thank I'm. You. I haven't been up there or seen these, but I'm. A, I'm guessing this is a series of condos, and they're all built yeah. identical across the board. Right. This is unit four, so it's probably phased. Right. No, I'm in favor of it. No issues. Brad, Neil, I have no problem with it. I I don't have. What's the, I do have a question though. What's the difference between a platform lift and a regular elevator? Uh, a lot. <laughs> Mostly weight and components, but a platform lift is what you would see. For example, the earlier variants that we had, that was an example of a platform lift. You would wheel yourself up on it or walk up on it and you push a, a directional continuous pressure button and you would run yourself up. Um, and if you're over 60 feet, you have to be fully enclosed. If you're less, or I'm sorry, 60 inches, you have to be fully enclosed. If you're less than 60 inches, you can be partially enclosed, which means you would have railing up to 42 inches surrounding you. And if you're less than. Oh, OK, I see. Yeah, I think I think if you're less than five feet, you don't have to have anything and they have handrails that come down. So it's literally just a platform with a ramp that folds down. You wheel up on it and then you would do, it's continuous pressure. And it, oh, OK, it's not in a shaft. <laughs> No, it's it's all self-contained units typically. Okay. Okay. Um, in light of uh, the uh, uh, commentary between the members of the board and the parties, is there a motion? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, for Board of Building Appeals, case number two zero dash zero zero five seven. The appellant is Legends Construction for the premises Bay. Villas uh, Unit 4 at 2596 South Waterside Court, Lakeside, Marblehead, Ohio, 43440. The appellee is Charles Updike, uh, Chief Elevator Inspector for the State of Ohio and Adjudication Order Number E2020-66640. Uh, I move to grant the variance. Uh, without condition, uh, noting the no objection of the chief elevator inspector. Okay, very good. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chair. And there's a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Passage unanimously um, <clears throat> without condition. Thank you very much. That concludes our elevator division cases. Uh, good to see you again, Mr. Updike. Thank yes, you very much. Thank you. For Thanks, Chip. Bye. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Um, I do think we have, the, I know we have Mr. Bowman uh, uh, in the lobby or present, um, and I'm, I'm not sure about uh, Ms. Stevenson or any other representative on behalf of the appellate. Is there anybody, uh, are the, uh, uh, would the, would the uh, uh, bakery representatives be here? Anyone? Yes, I'm, Stacy's here. Okay, Is, will there be anybody else appearing with you? No. Okay. Very good. Um, and let the record reflect it's 9.05. We'll call this case. It was set for 9 o'clock. It's an Ashtabula County uh, Building Department matter. It's case number 20-0058. It deals with the premises known as the Bakery on Main located in Ashtabula, and that jurisdiction's adjudication number is noted on the docket. Um, let's have an introduction to the parties beginning with Ms. Stevenson on behalf of the appellant, or is she is the appellant, um, state your full name, spell your last name. We'll do the same thing with Mr. Bowman on behalf of the building department, and I'll have Sam, our court stenographer, uh, administer an oath. Stacy Stevenson, S T E V E N S O N. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bowman. Uh, Dennis Bowman, B O W M A N, Chief Building Official for the Asheville County Building Department. Okay. It's kind of odd when we're doing this by Zoom and some people are present and uh, they're they're interactive in the sense we can see them and, other, uh, and others we cannot. But if I'd indulge each of you to uh, stand and raise your right hand, it's kind of hard to face our court stenographer since he's on screen, but uh, he'll he'll administer an oath. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Okay, um, ordinarily we, we would ask Ms. Stevenson to, to present the issues. Um, uh, you have the floor if you're comfortable doing that or do you want Mr. Bowman uh, to uh, describe the, the situation uh, as the building official? Either way, it's up to you. Uh, Mr. Bowman, if you wouldn't mind. 
Sure. So this application was for a Type 2 HUD, and uh, the issue that came up with this one is the termination. So due to the arrangement of the building, basically the four exterior walls of the building are property line. Um, they're proposing to go out a side wall. Uh, to go out a top wall right now, there's apartments above uh, this existing first floor unit, so they'd have to build some sort of shaft to get this exhaust up through to go out the roof. Um, so they're proposing to go out a side wall. Uh, I believe in the past, uh, this, is where an, uh, this is where an exhaust was. Uh, it was removed at some point. Uh, searched our records, we don't see anything. Um, then enclosed, they're proposing to open this back up and uh, go out this area with the outlet. What uh, what's the building department's comfort level with that? Um, we have been in discussion with the city and the city zoning. Uh, the city has approved it. They have no objections, uh, and neither do we. Okay, uh, gentlemen, any any questions of Mr. Bowman? Has right. anybody talked with the fire department? Uh, yes, uh, the fire department has no issue with it as well. I have a letter from them. Um, that I could send. I believe I sent it last week to Susan. Okay. I have it. We have it. Uh, members of the, it's uh, well. Let's let's make sure that this is what it is. It's an inspection date of June tenth. Uh, Ashtabula Fire Department, Bakery on Main, uh, oh, conduct ice and chase. chase. Um, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't just a status passes no violations what does that mean um i have a separate letter from april 27th when they reviewed the construction documents as they that they submitted and the only objection they noted uh was that uh it being a type 2 hood of course no grease laden vapors could be produced and that should be noted on the certificate of occupancy okay um that i do not believe we have We have your adjudication order, the original packet, and the, the uh, application for appeal. That's all we have. And then we have this uh, June 10th inspection, which just says it passes. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the same thing as a no objection from the fire official. What, what do the members of the board think? No, I don't think that suffices to say the fire department blesses it. I mean, it sounds like from Mr. Bowman's letter that yes they would i just we need it in our i would prefer to have it in our files i can email it in i could potentially try and turn this camera on and hold it up right now um i think if you got that if you were able to email that to miss steer that would be fine yep i will do that but but why don't you can you read the relevant portion to us because i guess what mr welch is saying is uh no objection from the fire official you know is, is that the way it's worded um, I will read it uh, verbatim here. Okay. Uh, so after the subject line, the Ashtabula Fire Department takes exception to the plans and applications as submitted with one comment. Ohio Fire, Ohio Fire Code 609.2 permits the installation of a type two hood system only where grease laden effluent is not produced. The Ashtabula Fire Department would like written clarification stipulating grease laden vapors will not be produced. In addition, such stipulations shall be placed on the certificate of occupancy Respectfully, Stephen Chase, Captain, Fire Prevention Bureau. I defer to my colleagues on their thoughts on that. Uh, here's what I would like to see is let's, can we get that uh, emailed over to uh, Ms. Steer and have her send that out to the board? Um, I, I think it's probs, in order for us to type up the conditions, um, I mean, I, I would have to type out exactly what the fire official wants to see. Um, uh, on there, and I think it would be easier if we had that letter in front of us. So, if that's something we could do. Yeah, I would agree, Mr. Bowman. Are you able to turn that around now? Uh, yeah. If you, I'll throw it on mute here, and I'll go scan it and get it emailed out. If that's okay. all right. So, so real quickly before you leave, real quick to do that, um, I just want to get an idea here from the members of the board. Yeah, you have a comfort level with uh, with fire official approval uh, to move forward with a variance. Uh, it sounds like. 
Yes, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair, I think I do. Um, the, the, uh, the, the biggest concern, and it's already been taken care of by the city zoning board. I mean, when he says it's going out of the sidewall, it's not really, it's actually going out the front storefront of this particular uh, business. So it's gonna be uh, above the sidewalk, basically, as people walk by. So that's the biggest concern. If, if the city, I'm sure their design review and or zoning processes have reviewed it, that's probably the, the bigger concern. But yes, having the fire official uh, input so that we can uh, correctly um, put together a variance uh, uh, condition that would be uh, okay with me. And then uh, Neil, Brad, Chip, same comfort level? Yes. Yeah, I mean, the code requires is a 10 foot clearance. Is that what the variance is? Is below that? It's for uh, that it's terminating over a property line because the building wall is the property line. So it's extending out beyond the property line. Oh. and that it's directed uh, over over a walkway. So that's what the variance is for. Yes, okay. sir. OK, all right. I, I think under the circumstances, uh, uh, Sam, let's go off the record. Let Mr. Bowman scan, email that to Susan. Uh, Susan can get that into uh, at least uh, Paul's hands um, for purposes of uh, uh, crafting some conditions. Ms. Stevenson, Mr. Bowman, we'll go back on the record once um, Mr. Began has that and has has uh, proposed a condition. He'll read those into the record. Uh, we'll, we'll seek comments from both of you uh, and other members of the board for that matter, and then uh, we'll resume with the hearing. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. Thanks. Uh, we're off the record. The time is approximately 9:14, and we are off the record. You know what we could do? We could go back on the record for one second, um, and. I know Paul, because Paul isn't, it doesn't have anything yet. Um, Sam, can we go back on, please? All right, the time is approximately 9.14, and we're back on the record. Could uh, Let's consider the approving the minutes for uh, last week, or the week, really the week before June 4th's hearings. Uh, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So I'll move, Mr. Chair. And is there a second? Second. OK, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Um, those minutes will be approved. Susan, I have those. I'll I'll sign them and scan them and send them to you here. Okay. Um, and it doesn't look like. Are you? And we can deal with this tomorrow if we had to. But do you anticipate any new business as of today, Susan? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. All right. Okay, Sam. We'll go back off. Thanks. Okay, the time is approximately 9.15. We are back off record. Okay, I emailed out that letter. Let me know if you do not receive it, uh, Susan. I will. Paul, I just emailed it. All right, here we go.
Well, that doesn't say it approves, but it doesn't say it disapproves either. Yeah, I agree with Chip. What was that? I had, uh, what's that? The, the letter is pretty vague. It doesn't approve or disapprove. Maybe we should add a condition. Susan, I emailed you the minutes. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I'm still in support of the variance. I guess my suggestion would be uh, a, a letter from the fire official or conditioned upon a letter from the fire official clarifying, right. which I'm sure Paul is probably drafting as we speak. Um, and the condition that there be no grease laden vapors produced. Right. So a, a more uh, a more direct letter. Yeah. Right. A letter of no objection. Yeah. All right, let me finish putting these together and we can go back on. Yeah, Sam, let's go back on the record. The time is approximately 921 and we're back on the record. And Neil, many people come into your office? Um, quite a few, why? No, I just, no, I just didn't know if you were like sort of up and running fully for- Oh, we just, we just went fully staffed today. Okay. Yeah, we went fully staffed starting today. Okay. We have probably 20 employees in here currently. But we have, we have, ample room. I mean, everybody is more than eight, ten foot apart.
I thought you meant during the meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I shut the door. Well, it's a public meeting. <laughs> well, you know when I'm coming in here. To... <laughs> Zoom bombing. Exactly. All right, we're a little bit circular in this thing, but I, I think I got it. Let me get it posted up on the screen for everybody. All right, Carl, if we want to go ahead, we can give right. this a shot. And let me let me ask, so Ms. Stevenson, Mr. Bowman, are you uh, are you able to see that or are you since you're are you just both on the telephone? Yes, I can see that. Ms. Stevenson. Loser. I was afraid that might. All right, I'm, I need to unmute. Um, no, I am just on the phone. Okay, listen carefully then. Mr. Began is going to read these proposed conditions uh, and then we'll invite your comment, if any. Okay? Sure. Now, the fire officials letter is it makes things a little bit circular, uh, but since we want to make sure that we get a letter of no objection from the uh, fire official that the uh, the fire official is requesting a letter uh, from the appellant. So we'll, I'm putting those both as conditions and I know this ends, might end up being circular, but um, it will be up for uh, Ms. Stevenson to make sure that she communicates with the fire official uh, these conditions because it, it, it's not uh, for Mr. Bowman to have to follow up with the fire department to make sure that all of this happens. Um, but uh, the variance is conditioned upon the following. Uh, number one, a letter shall be submitted by the appellant to the Ashtabula Fire Department stating that the installed hood is a type 2 hood and that no grease laden vapors will be produced. Number two, a letter of no objection shall be submitted by the Ashtabula Fire Department to the uh, Board of Building Appeals and the building official before the certificate of occupancy is issued. And number three, uh, the requirement that the hood be a type 2 hood and that no grease laden vapors will be produced shall be listed on the certificate of occupancy. Okay, uh, Ms. Stevenson, so essentially what the, the onus is on you to, to secure that from the fire department. That doesn't mean Mr. Bowman might not help you, uh, but, the, but the burden's not on the building department to do that. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. Any uh, any objections to those proposed conditions? No. Okay. Mr. Bowman? No. Okay. Uh, I guess we're to a point where we could entertain a motion. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, for uh, Board of Building Appeals case number 20-0058, the appellant is Stacy Stevenson uh, for the premises, uh, the bakery on Main at 4608 Main Avenue, Ashtabula, Ohio, 44004. The appellee is Dennis uh, Bauman, building official for the Ashtabula County Building Department and adjudication order number C-2020-00318. I move that the variance be granted subject to the conditions previously read in the record and noting the no objection of the building official. 
Okay, motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, multiple seconds. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye, please. Aye. aye. All those opposed say nay. Um, uh, Ms. Stevenson and uh, Mr. Bowman, the uh, variance is granted on those conditions. Uh, best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, it is 928. Um, Susan, do we, the 930 case has been continued. So we're waiting on the 10 o'clock case. I understood that you were going to reach out and see whether or not they might be able to advance it. I assume you have not heard. Um, I believe there's a couple people that are currently on. You want to, um, well, uh, Mr. I'm sorry, <laughs> Matt um, Althaus. But I did ask him to try to connect by 930 if possible. Okay, so um, I'm assuming we, is, is Mr. Burse on the phone or on? Um, I'm, I have a telephone number here and I'm not sure that's if that's. I, I, think, I, think, I think at this point in time, we probably need to go off the record uh, until the parties are available for the hearing. Correct, not all are here. I will let you know as soon as I see them all up here. Okay, I was I I had told Susan I, I in theory I I have a sort of a hard stop at noon, but I've got some flexibility. It's not that hard to stop. Um, but if we get ahead of the calendar, great. If not, we'll deal with uh, we'll deal with it. Uh, anybody object to get going off the record for a few minutes? Nope. Nope. No. Okay. Um, off, off the record, Sam. All right. The time is approximately nine thirty, and we're going off the record. Thank you.
Susan? Yes. Just was uh, just checking in. Okay, um, I'm working with a couple. That's I fine. think they've come That's in fine. as attendees. I assume you'll you'll just let us know. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Um, whoever has the phone number of 513-595-5200, could you please identify yourself? Uh, Rafik Nekuzi, building official for us, Mark. Okay. Thank you. You can go ahead and mute yourself. Uh, there's still one case before you. Okay. Thank you. You can mute yourself by hitting star six on your phone. Thank you. Jim Mitchell, I see that you've entered. And you have left. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can. I will let them know you're here. Um, I'm not sure who else you're expecting. I believe we're still waiting on the building official. Mike um, yes. Um, Matt is here. Um, I believe Mark, Mark Headley. Um, no, he is not here yet. I'm not sure who all speaking. Good morning. Uh, Jim is the owner going to attend. Do you know? Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Is oh. the owner, uh, do you know if he's attending? I can't speak for the owner. I'm with the city of Hilliard Building Department. Oh, I apologize. I had you added by the applicant. <laughs> no, okay. I am the plans presenter. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mertz is, I believe, trying to connect. Yes. Uh, Mr. Sahada?
Yes. I'm sorry, this is Stefan Zaheda. Oh, good morning. Uh, do you know um, who all you expect on your end to attend? Um, yes, Mark, well, Mark Headley, um, Matt Althaus, um, and Mr. Baseman is supposed to be, um, it indicated he would be on this call as well. Okay, I'm not sure if some of them, um, Mr. Headley, um, I see that Matt um, yes. Althaus is present. Um, I'm not sure about Mr. Headley or Mr. Baseman. I will, uh, I can check with Mr. Headley uh, right now. I'm not sure, I'll have to ask Matt. I think he was on the call with Mr. Baseman earlier, so uh, I will okay. check, but he's supposed, to, he's supposed to be on there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hello, this is Rod Baseman. I'm joining uh, audio only. I'm the owner. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Uh, we should start, mm -hmm. I believe, any moment with you now. Pre We're waiting on the building official, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I was I was having trouble with the team's uh, invite. Okay. Carl or Paul? Yeah. Is there any way we can go out? There's seven attendees. I'm not sure if any of them think they're connected and they're not, and they're for this next case. We're missing um, the building official. I've I've emailed him, but uh, I, I think they may be attendees and not presenters right now. Okay, um, for uh, the next case that we have, uh, that's case number 20-0055, uh, and that is for the uh, uh, basement uh, printing connector building. Um, we're missing our building official. Uh, we are noticing that there are six people uh, attending this uh, Microsoft Live event as an attendee. If you are logged in as an attendee, that means you can only watch and you cannot participate. Um, if that is the case, you need to contact Ms. Steer so that she can give you at least a, a phone uh, number for you to call in so you can participate. And here's, here's, what I think, here's what I think we know. We're still off the record. We have Mr. Baseman by telephone. Uh, we have Mr. Uh, Althaus, uh, who looks like he's in queue. Um, we have Mr. Stahada, uh, who's already 
uh, indicated he's he's on an interactive, and we have Mr. Mitchell. What I didn't get, what when I wasn't clear when I asked Mr. Mitchell is whether or not he thought Mr. Merce was going to accompany him, or whether he was going to handle it. I framed the question in the alternative, and he said yes. And I'm not sure if that was yes, he was going to handle the hearing, or whether Mr. Merce was going to be there uh, in attendance. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Okay. So, are, are we waiting on Mike Mers, or are you are you are you handling this on behalf of Hilliard? I'm. Okay. I, Can you hear me? Yes. Um, Mr. Mers is supposed to be here, but okay. I, 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 I will, I will tell you that I am as uh, in addition to being in the. Plans examiner. I'm also the backup chief building official. Okay. Yes, I can do that. You can you can proceed if we yes, proceed it early. Okay. Yes, I can. Okay. Let me let me let me just make sure that we're all on the same page. We have we have Mr. Mitchell here, uh, who representative and plans examiner and uh, uh, the backup CBO for Hilliard is present. We have Mr. Baseman present. Uh, by telephone, we have Mr. Althaus and Mr. Stahada present uh, through MS Teams, uh, which I assume means they would they would have vis visual connectivity. Is there anybody else, Mr. Stahada or Mr. Baseman or Mr. Althaus, that will be appearing on behalf of the appellant? Uh, this is. I don't believe so. This is Matt Althaus. Um, our, one of our partners may be joining, uh, Mark Headley. Uh, we're trying to get him logged in. Uh, he's the architect of record. Okay, then we'll, I, I suppose we're, it'd be premature. Let, sure to let me, let me go check with him and see if he's gonna okay. be able to log in or not, and then we can okay. move forward. Okay, sounds good. We're, we remain off the record. You can pause your camera if you want, Carl. That'll, that'll put up the notice. All right, Mark is going to be unable to join, so so we have we have no other in, uh, attendees. Okay, then I then I think uh, let's go back on live event. Um, and I uh, let me let me uh, I'll get I'll, I'll call the case. I'll get then I'll I'll get uh, everybody's consent to move forward ten or twelve minutes early. Uh, then then as docketed. Um, I'm going to call this uh, case. It's a uh, case. It's a Hilliard uh, uh, adjudication matter. It's case number 20 hyphen 0055. It deals with basement printing. Uh, uh, pr the premise is known as basement printing located in that jurisdiction and that jurisdiction's adjudication number is noted on our docket. Um, uh, let's have an introduction of the parties. Um, I, I know that we have Mr. Althaus, uh, Mr. Stahada, and Mr. Uh, Baseman uh, on the line, as well as Mr. Mitchell on behalf of the uh, uh, building department. But uh, beginning with Mr. Baseman, would you state your full name, spell your last name, uh, and uh, the capacity by which you're here, which I think in your case is owner. Um, and we'll do the same thing with the building official. I'll have an oath administered, and then I'll get a consent to start five or 10 minutes early. OK, uh, this is Rod uh, Baseman, B-A-E-S-M-A-N. Uh, and yes, I am the owner of the property. Thank you. Mr. Stahada or Mr. Ba uh, Mr. Althaus? I th this is Matt Althaus, A-L-T-H-O-U-S-E. I am uh, one of the project managers uh, for Red Architecture that is working on this project. Thank you, Mr. Allhouse. And I am Stefan Fajeda, uh, F-A-H-A-Y-D-A. -A -A. I'm also a project manager on this project. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Mr. Mitch. Mr. Mitchell? Yes, my name is James Mitchell, M I T C H E L L. I, I am the plans examiner for the city of Hilliard 
and I also serve in the capacity as, as backup chief gunning official. Thank you very much. If each of you, I'd indulge each of you to uh, stand, raise your right hand. Uh, Steve, our court uh, stenographer, will administer an oath. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. Okay, very well. Um, it is uh, 9.51. I understand Mr. Headley is unable to join us due to maybe some technical difficulties. Um, He's actually uh, sitting right next to me right now. So. Oh, okay. Well, then, Mr. Headley, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to need Mr. Headley to introduce himself, enter your appearance, tell your last name, the capacity by which you're here on behalf of the appellant, and then I'll, uh, we'll have an oath administered to you, please. Okay. okay. Mark Headley, H-E-A-D-L-E-E. -E -E. I'm with Red Architecture and we're the architect record for this project. Okay, you stand, raise your right hand, Sam. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, um, very good. It is it is 9.52. The case was set for uh, 10 o'clock on our docket. Uh, it seems like we had everybody here. Is there any objection to proceeding 10 minutes early? No. Hearing no. none, hearing none, I will uh, turn this over to uh, uh, one of Mr. Paisman's representatives. Uh, this is Matt Althaus. I will do uh, a quick synopsis of the project. Um, we have uh, two existing buildings. Um, we have uh, combined the lots, so we have two buildings on one site. What we are uh, proposing to do is connect the two buildings uh, with a connector. Uh, the warehouse building is an unlimited area, fully sprinklered type two building. The adjacent building is a type 5B non sprinklered building. Um, and in an effort to maintain some continuity with the, the open area around the unlimited area building, we have put in a three hour firewall at the end um, of the connector on the, the non sprinklered side. Uh, we'll basically be extending the unlimited area building and the sprinklers into the connector. Um, and, and and basically what we're we're doing is kind of bisecting and and blocking off that open yard. And that's what our variance is currently, uh, or, or what we're seeking is um, leniency on um, the required continuity of that yard. Okay, um, we do have some drawings that are up. Um, quest, yes. quest, questions of Mr. Allhouse? Uh, yes, the, uh, we have up on the screen uh, your uh, kind of overall project plan. There's a larger building and a smaller building. Which which is the the uh, sprinkler and which one's the unsprinkler? The larger building is the sprinkler unlimited area building. The, the smaller is the, the unsprinkler type 5B building. Do, do both buildings have a, a fire alarm system? The larger building does, the smaller building does not. Um, and I, we do have a letter uh, uh, from the fire official um, stating that he does not have an objection considering that you put up the fire bear. He says firewall, but I guess I need it's, some clarification. It's not a firewall, is it? It is a firewall. It extends 10 feet beyond either side of the connector and extends 24 inches above the connector as well. So as a firewall, by definition, if either side of that building burns, it will speak structurally independent? Correct. So it is an actual firewall? It is. However, with an opening? With a shuttered opening, yes. Okay. That's why that, that wall, it's, it's a little bit further than 10 feet on either side. We wanted to make sure that wall was more than, or that opening was less than 25% of that wall. So we made that wall larger than it needed. Okay, I, I don't I don't have any further questions. Although, um, Mr. Chair, I would, uh, 
depending on the rest of my colleagues, I, I might be in favor of adding a fire alarm system to the to the uh, unsprinkler building. OK. Um, other, other questions of the appellant? OK, Mr. Chair, I have one. What, okay. what exactly um, what uh, takes place in the unsprinkler building, the smaller one? The uh, it's Rod Baseman. I can well, I can probably answer that. Uh, I suppose the best. Um, so we have. Uh, it is not a storage facility. Um, there are uh, print pieces of printing equipment over there um, that are similar to what uh, would be described as kind of an office copier, uh, except they're larger and faster. Um, also, we have uh, some people over there doing hand operations, hand hand work type operations that relate to uh, the, the printing industry and building kits and, and things like that. And, and what's the typical occupancy of that? So, um, probably um, say no more than 20 people at any one point in time. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, let's hear from Mr. Mitchell. Okay, uh, yes, the case before you, the reason why it is a an item for adjudication is because the larger building was a unlimited area building, which typically requires 60 feet clear perimeter around the all sides of the building. The connector obviously interferes with that previous 60 foot clear opening. However, um, as, as we looked at the plans uh, with with the intent of the applicant to sprinkler the, the corridor and also with the fire shutter, excuse me, the three hour fire shutter and three hour firewall at the point of connection to the existing building, we feel those two items collectively that the applicant has addressed the concerns and the city does not take exception to the granting of this bill. Okay, questions of uh, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, I assume, uh, Mr. Mitchell, that you have been in, in a meeting with the fire official regarding this. I know we do have a letter from him, but you know he understands that that's going to limit his ability to uh, access completely around uh, the unlimited area building and that he may be have to put his apparatus into basically a courtyard between two buildings. Uh, that is correct. Uh, we had we had Fire Marshal Scott Tigner involved. He also um, had these plans before him. There were discussions before we came before the board between us and the applicants and I, I think it is his feeling with the protection and with the streets that uh, are around this facility that he did not have any concern in that regard. Okay. Um, in light of Mr. Began's questions of Mr. Mitchell, Mr. Althaus, anything further? Uh, and just talking with Rod before this call, he wanted to make sure that um, that we noted that there is potential for this uh, smaller building to be torn down in the future, that we would expand unlimited area building um, as a you know a future expansion. There, it's it's not anything that's happening soon, but just in the you know the back of his mind, that's one of those things that could happen where we we put a sprinkler system into this building it, it could be torn down and, and just kind of been a waste so we're looking for ways to um, give him ultimate flexibility for future growth okay thank you um mr uh, one question mr chair mr Aldous, how many this is chip welch how many people are in the smaller eighteen thousand square foot office type space building uh, Rod mentioned that uh, he would have no more than 20, 20 employees within that okay. building at any given time. I thought that applied to the warehousing side. I might misunderstood. My apologies. Rod, do you want to clarify? Is that 
Yeah, that would be yeah twenty uh, total, and um, really we're only planning on one person to be in that office area at this point. Only one person will have uh, um, a spot over there in that small office area. Okay, so twenty total between the two buildings and one person in the office of the smaller building. Uh, no, twenty people total in the smaller okay. building, okay. including the office, including yeah. the office area. Okay. Yeah. On the in the bigger building, we have some, you know, somewhere around maybe 80 people at any one time. Thank you. Um, all right, gentlemen, uh, thoughts and comments. Do you want to go first, Paul, or do you want me? <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll let let you go. I think I kind of already let on what I was thinking. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm in support of the variance with the condition that the alarm system be extended into the the alarm and detection system be extended into the smaller building. I mean, it's we dealt with one of these projects in in the city of Hilliard here within the last year, uh, but both buildings already were alarmed. Um, I mean, essentially, in my opinion, occupants of both sides need to know if there's an issue uh, or a fire issue or a safety issue um, for the notification purposes to get out. So I would support the variance with the extension of the alarm and detection system into the smaller building. Neil? Um, I, I agree with both the colleagues. I would support it with the uh, extension of the alarm. I probably would support it uh, without that too, without that added condition. But I'm in favor of the variance. Brad. Yeah, I think they did a pretty good job. Uh, uh, I think covering the concerns you'd normally have in a situation like this, extending the firewall and having the opening less than 25% of the firewall. So, you know, I think. Uh, I think having the fire alarm system extended is a good idea, like Chip said. So I would support it under that condition. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I think it makes sense to have the fire alarm system. I understand that, that in the future this building may be taken down, but uh, my biggest concern is not necessarily about um, egress of the occupants because it seems like at each of the buildings there's enough doors um, although you know as i'm looking at one of the connect one of the egress doors from the connector piece um, it's actually exiting into the courtyard between the two buildings and that's where my biggest concern is is that courtyard piece because you have uh, an unsprinkler type 5b building so i assume it's all cons constructed of wood uh, and um currently as presented there's no fire alarm in there and if there's a situation the the fire department actually probably needs because of the size of that building and to be able to access all sides probably need to go into that courtyard area uh with its with its apparatus um and definitely uh again from that connector there's a door going into that courtyard and that's probably the most dangerous place so uh an early detection system there uh, is going to make it uh, less likely that by the time the fire department shows up there, that it is a point that they just have to kind of let it let it burn. Um, so uh, I would be in favor of the the variance with a condition upon the extension of the fire alarm system. Okay, Mr. Oldhouse or 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 your colleagues, um, if you want to weigh in on that? Sounds like at least three of the board members are leaning in that direction yeah I, this is mr althaus um the the smaller unsprinkler building is a pre-engineered metal building uh with eight feet of concrete block up around the outside so it's a non-combustible building just from a from a construction classification standpoint and why is it a type five just it, it doesn't need to be a type 2b just from a code standpoint that's the way it was designed it's just the way it was designed we didn't design it. So. Yeah, we. Is that is that Mr. Headley? We're just trying to make sure yeah. we have a yes. record. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. This uh, is Mark Headley. Thank you. It, it, it's an existing building, and that's what we were 
we have existing drawings. Yeah, we have, we have existing drawings. So originally it was permitted as a 5B building, even though potentially it could be classified as um, a 2B. Uh, does, does that explanation impact you, Chip, or your those that Brad and and uh, Paul? Um, but I think it was the fact that it's an on. I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still probably leaning towards, uh, ha, you know, having the fire alarm system be be extended again. You know, the 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 variance is to not sprinkler it, uh, and generally when we do a variance to not put sprinklers in, we at least require a minimum of a fire alarm system. So um, again, it, it would make sense. Early notification is 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 probably the best weapon at this point. Chip. Yeah, I, I agree. I I at least want to get the people out. Um, I mean, whether the fire I, I don't know the the height of these buildings and it, whether the fire department decides to bring an apparatus into that courtyard is I, I don't know, but um, I just want to get the people out and get them notification of any incident. Brad. Yeah, I agree with my colleagues. Uh, concerning the fire alarm system uh, and evacuation of the occupants of the building. Okay, so Neil looks like uh, um, yeah, I, I could probably live with the variance without that, but it looks like we have three that are uh, proponents of, of, of that detection. Yeah, um, and, and I said I would support it either way. Right, you did. Um, so uh, Mr. Allhouse, Mr. Headley, Mr. Stahada, um, anything further at this point? No, no, sir. No, Mr. Mitchell. No additional items. OK, um, Paul, do you need a second? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it, so uh, give me a moment. Uh, enough to get off record. Uh, if, if you just give me another minute here, I'll, I'm, I'm almost done. We'll stay on record. I hear birds. Yeah, that's me.
while we're on record. Susan, um, are there others of it, uh, you know in the queue? I'm sorry for the next meeting or hearing. Yeah, I just didn't know. If um, the building maybe official. I could look and find out, but I don't know how to do that, and I don't dare <laughs> play around while I'm. I'm That's. Actually, I'm not out. No, I, I, I actually uh, the building official is present by phone, I believe, and I just sent an email to the applicant or owner. Okay. okay. Thanks. It's an architectural minute. Yeah, well, yeah, didn't you know that, that we have different minutes than other people? 20 hours a day is what you guys go on your clock, right? <laughs> Hold on. I don't think architects should be concerned about their billable hours. I'm talking true. to an attorney, please. True. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Um, I do have some conditions. I am putting them up on the screen uh, so that everybody can see them. Uh, Mr. Baseman will not be able to, presumably, yeah. so listen carefully. Okay. Um, this variance is conditioned upon the following. Number one, a firewall shall be installed at the north end of the connector adjacent to the unsprinklered portion of the building. The firewall shall extend a minimum of 10 feet to each side of the connector. Um, number two, the opening into the connector from the unsprinkler building shall be protected with a three hour uh, rate of fire shutter and not be more than 25% uh, of the uh, firewall. Uh, number three, uh, the fire detection and notification system, uh, including system smoke detectors with integral heat detectors, audible slash visual devices throughout the structure, and pool stations at all identified means of egress shall be extended into the unsprinkler building and interconnected uh, to the warehouse building alarm system to the satisfaction of the building and fire officials. Number four, the alternate fire alarm system shall be listed as a special condition, condition on the certificate of occupancy and maintained as required systems utilizing the Ohio Fire Code and adopted NFPA standards. Number five, uh, this variance is granted based on the use, uh, construction, occupant load, uh, square footage, and level of activity identified on the approved construction documents, including the maintenance of all building systems and any conditions required herein. And number six, the chief building official shall forward a copy of any certificate of occupancy to the fire department having either emergency response or fire prevention responsibility. And this is noted the no objection of the uh, building and fire officials. Okay, uh, comments from any of the red architecture representatives? No. Okay, uh, Mr. Baseman. Uh, no, no. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, you know, we bought that building, you know, as it is, and our plan was to put a um, fire detection system over there anyway for safety of uh, of our team and to protect the building. So Thank I'm you. fine with all this. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Anything to weigh in on? No, I have no additional comments. 
Very well. I think we're to a motion stage. Hold, hold on, Paul. Can you go back up to number two? Yes. I think the end of that sentence, it just says 25. Yes. Is that, is that okay or does that need clarification that it's... I, I, I read 25% of the firewall and I've changed it before I sent it to Susan. Okay. Thank you. I'm good. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Let me get in here. Uh, for Board of Building Appeals case number 20-0055, uh, the appellant is Rod Baseman uh, for the premises Baseman Printing Connector Building at 4477 Reynolds Drive, Hilliard, Ohio, 43026. Kelly is Michael Murs, uh, building official for the City of Hilliard Building Department and adjudication order number 20-8006BC. Uh, I move to grant the variance subject to the conditions previously read in the record uh, and again noting the no objection of the building and fire officials. Very well. Motion's been made. Second? Second, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Welch uh, made the second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Uh, variance is granted on those conditions. Thank you very much. Well presented, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Um, Thank you. I think we'll probably go off the record at this point in time, uh, subject to anything Susan wants to tell us. Um, I'm still waiting on the yeah. applicant owner for the next case. Okay. Uh, any objection going off the record? We'll go off the record, Sam. Right. The time is approximately 10, 17 a.m. and we're going off the record.
Hi, is this Teresa? Yes, it is. Awesome, thank you. Um, as soon as the chairman um, starts the live event again, they'll probably call the case. I believe um, the building official is here as well for Forest Park. Is that all you okay. expect? I'm, I'm uh, back yeah. on if uh, we yeah. have it. But okay. I'm not sure we have all the board members right now. Okay. Well, the parties are here, Carl, when, it, when okay. you're ready. And then are you going to reach out then uh, to our uh, uh, Grove City case? I will. Okay, thank you. This was your second phone call with this, where you, you that was the, essentially it. Okay, Neil's, Neil's muted and blocked. No picture. Chips on, Paul's on. Don't see Brad. I'm here. Just getting some coffee. Yep, yep. Neil's there. So we get Brad interactive. We're ready to go. We've got Sam on. Your background noise, it's my coffee maker. That's your coffee maker? It is. Wow. You're on your second pot already. You're all by yourself. <laughs> I'm gonna start seeing you shake. Yep, we lost Paul. Did we lose Paul also? No, he's, yeah, he's. Let me ask uh, Don Plank, are, are you going to participate? Mr. Plank? I don't believe he's on at this time. Okay. He was. I yes, yeah, so as a guest, but. Uh, oh yes, he is on. I'm sorry, I do see him now. I don't now, but. Uh, I do as a guest. He is currently on. He's just muted. Okay. Um. Would he be able to hear me? I don't know. I'm his um, legal assistant just emailed me, so I'm responding. Well, okay. Well, I just want to know if he's going to present as, as counsel. He's Carl, he's connecting again by phone. Oh. OK. Yeah, yeah, this is Don Plank, and I want to just before your 1030 meeting, just I will be participating as well. Okay. Uh, others at the city. Okay. 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 Thank you. But I, I have to do it by phone because something my computer doesn't recognize my speaker for some reason. I got you. But Mr. Plank, uh, your your client is whom? The client is Concord, um, the 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 applicant. Gotcha. Um, That's what I the okay. yeah. They're okay. actually going to be at Grove City City Hall with the chief building official. Um, so that, that he and the architect and the building of one at the same time. Great, great. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to you to present, but you may just be turning it over, it sounds like, to your client. Yeah, my experience is the few times I've been before the board that they really don't care to hear up too much about from lawyers. Um, and so I'll make sure that that's the case today as well. Okay, understood. Okay, thank you. And I'll, and with that, I'll probably sign off now. Our our hearings at at eleven. Well, no, we're going. We're, we're actually we're we're actually if everybody everybody's present, we'd like to advance the hearing. Um. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. That's, that's the next one. case. You have one before his. Oh. Okay. Oh, and, oh, I and they are here. Yeah, he's on Concord Fabricate. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, perfect. You're right. Um. Okay, we have everybody. Okay, Mr. Yeah, you. Uh, you're. I'm going to hang off. Yeah, you Thank can you. hang off, but we're if if 
in the event we get done with this hearing before 11, you might want to check. You might want to sign in just a few minutes before. OK, I will do that. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Is uh, Brad on? Brad is on. OK, I'm on. Um, and we've got everybody here. Perfect. Um, OK, let's go back on the record, Sam. OK, the time is approximately 1026 and we are back on the record. Okay, and um, we got a live event on. Good. Uh, this is a, a case that was set for 1030 on our docket. I will note, however, it's 1026, um, but the parties are available, so I think we'll advance the hearing a few minutes early. It's case number 20-0003, deals with uh, the premises known as Mills uh, Run Apartments located in Forest Park, Ohio, and that jurisdiction's adjudication number uh, is noted on our docket. Let's have an introduction, if we could, of the parties. We'll begin with the Mill Run Apartment representative. State your full name and then spell your last name so that we get that down on the record correctly. Uh, and then the capacity by which you're here, owner, architect, investor, project manager, engineer, et cetera. We'll do the same thing then with the Forest Park building official. Uh, we'll have an oath administered and to the extent it's still before 1030, uh, I'll get a waiver to proceed a couple minutes early. <clears throat> Um, uh, this is Therese Cochran, C-O-C-H-R-A-N. Thank you. And your and the capacity by which you're here? Uh, I'm the Director of Property Management for Virgin Health, which is the managing agent for an okay. open apartment. All right, the property manager, got you. Yes. Any, anybody else with you? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, I'll just because we're interactive. Uh, anybody else uh, uh, on the present for Mill Run Apartments? Okay, hearing none. Uh, uh, the building official, please. Uh, Rafik Nekuzi, building official, Forest Park. Very good. Ms. Cocker and Mr. Nekuzi, could you please stand, raise your right hand. Sam, would you administer an oath, please? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. We do. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cousy, you have the floor. Uh, and I mean, uh, Ms. Cocker, you have the floor unless you want to defer to the building official to uh, uh, describe the situation for members of the board. It's up to you. Um, uh, I can defer to Rafiq. I, I think we resolved the issue this morning with us applying for permit based on the drawings that we submitted, but I'll let him articulate. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Nakuzi. Uh, we got the applications this morning for the alteration without, a, without certificate of approval permit and the plans. And this will proceed with, with uh, plan review. This will be okay, satisfy our requirement. Oh. Oh, withdraw. Yeah. So is, yeah, so, so the issue is you've got an adjudication order that's been appealed. Is, is this appeal now moot? Yes, yeah. because we have the we already have the application and the plan this morning. Um, all right, so we could we could we we could take action because it's mooted, or preferably, Ms. Cochran, you could move to withdraw the appeal, which would be sustained, and that would end it. Mr. Chair, before before we proceed with that uh, line. I just want to make sure because there are some pieces that in the adjudication letter uh, regarding uh, accessibility um, that I want to make sure that, I mean, if the building official just got his plans this morning, if that addresses that item or if that's being taken away uh, because he, yeah, and that's, a, that's a valid use thing. Yeah. That, yeah, that's a valid point. I mean, is there anything, would there be anything still in front of us? Uh, Mr. Nakuzi, you want to comment on Mr. B's question? We didn't have time to review the plans yet. Uh, we, we did not have time to review the plan to, to, to check for accessibility or not. Yes, yeah, so, so what I would suggest, Mr. Chair, and then perhaps instead of uh, requesting from the uh, appellant, uh, this is the case that uh, maybe we motion for a continuance to allow the building official to complete uh, his review and 
maintain uh, this uh, as open if a variance is indeed required. Um, and uh, in that way, if they want to uh, remove their request for appeal, they could do so without having to appear before us. OK, so Ms. Cochran, Mr. Nacuzzi, what 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 this means is that in light of the questions and the, and the uh, uh, subject that Mr. Began addressed, if you were to withdraw, if Ms. Cochran were to withdraw the appeal, the adjudication order would stand and there may still be some items in that that have not been reviewed, uh, could impact your use. I think I'm saying that correctly. And so the suggestion here would be that we would continue this matter at this point to allow for plan review by Mr. Nacuzzi or his office. Um, and then uh, you could keystroke a withdrawal later on and not have to appear. Did I, did I say that correctly, Paul? I believe so, yes. Okay. You understand that, Ms. Cochran? Yes, yes. And we would definitely agree to that. And then as soon as we work everything out, um, I can submit a motion to withdraw. Well, just to, you don't sign a motion. You could just really send an email to this here. Okay. Yeah, that works. I mean, it's, that's that's what I meant by you could keystroke an email and that would that would cover you. Uh, later. Okay. okay. In light of that, um, I'd entertain a motion to continue the matter. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, this is Chip Welch. I would move to continue case number 20-0003. Motion to continue has been made. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chair. Neil Gary. Uh, Neil seconded it. All those in favor of continuing the matter say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Uh, matter is unanimously continued. You guys will get this worked out. Um, thank you. And thank you very much for appearing a few minutes early. <laughs> Thank you so much. OK, okay. Um, all right, we're off. Let's I assume we're going to go off the record again uh, and unless Susan uh, until Susan gives us the signal. I, I emailed everyone and hopefully they'll be joining soon. Perfect. Thank you very much. We'll go off record, Sam. The time is approximately 1033 and we're off the record. Mr. Plank? Yes. Okay, we're still waiting on Mike Boso and, and the others. Yeah, once you get Mike, you'll have everyone. Correct, I sent an email. I don't know if he's checking his emails, but. Do you think it would help if I maybe give him a call? Um, if you know his direct line, I or I can try the building department. Would that yeah, be the building department's really is almost his direct line for all practical oh. purposes. OK, I can go ahead and give it try Great. a phone call instead of an email. Thanks. Thanks Susan. Uh -huh.
<clears throat> Hi, Mary Lou. This is Chip Welch returning to the call. It's about 1036 on Monday morning. Um, unfortunately, I apologize. I'm on Zoom hearings all morning and Susan, I'm assuming no no luck with the CBO. I um, was on the phone with him a few okay. minutes ago. They were gathering in one area and okay. going to try to connect. I haven't Perfect. seen Perfect. him connect yet. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you. Thanks.
Hey, Susan, I didn't totally understand your email. You got. Um, I see that there's two attendees uh, still in the live event. I'm not sure if that's Mike Boso or not. Um, I tried to call his office again to speak with him, and I received his voicemail. So I just thought if it is Mike, if he could email me or call me, he's not connecting the way he should, or he can call the conference um, phone number. And, and enter the conference ID, and that will, he'll be able to connect that way if he's unable to do so by his computer. I just received an acceptance on the invite from somebody from the city of Grove City, so possibly they're working on it. Okay. Susan? Yes. 
I just want to, this is Don Plank, I just want to make sure <laughs> the silence is deafening. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure I was still on. You are. I can see you. Evidently, your computer mic doesn't work. Correct. Okay, so you're you're communicating through your phone as well. Okay, so yeah, you're in both the, both ways. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Okay. Just waiting on the building official. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the live event again.
presumably they're having difficulty. Um, that's what I would guess. I, um, I have the phone sitting here. I've talked to him, so he has my number. Um, like I said, I tried to call him. I got voicemail the second time. So I, and then I received a acceptance from someone from the city of Grove City, uh, like maybe he had forwarded his invite to him. Uh, and so I assume they're working on it, but they haven't call, contacted me. So I'm watching email, phone, and we'll see what happens. Hey, Don, have you gotten any word from your client? I have not. Um, all, all I know, they were heading over there for that meeting. You know, I here we, I here we go. I, Somebody's good. coming in. Okay, looks like we may be okay. I assume they're working on it, but they haven't talked. Contact with me. So I'm watching email from and we'll see what happens. Hi, Mike. Mike Boso. Okay. Yeah. I'm just Mike. Hi, Mike. Okay. I don't know if you have to accept this. We can see you guys on the screen. I don't know if you have to accept this or let us to be able to talk. Are we can hear you're in as an attendee if you're watching on a screen and then you called in on your phone. So you did not enter as a presenter through your computer, but there's like a 10 second delay, I believe, between the two. He would have to, he would have to mute his phone, okay. correct? Or he would stay on the phone and because we got the background, if we got the background. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where, if the background's coming from him or not. Um, Why it is because I'm on the phone and then I'm, I also have it on the screen. Okay, Mr. Bozo, this is Carl Schneider. Um, who's with you? Do you have Mr. Plank's clients? Yes, and the architect and the fire department. Okay. Um, well, I think we're, I, I don't think there's a delay now, Susan. No, because we logged out on the screen, so I can't see the screen. Correct. He. he one of the attendees left, so I assume that's him. We have one attendee yeah. now. Yeah, T. Hurley. And, and you can turn on your screen. Just make sure that the computer microphone is muted. That way we don't get the audio feedback, but at least that way you can see the screen if you want to, um, although it will be a little delayed. Shouldn't I be able to talk through the computer though? Um, if you, you, but you're not logged in, you're not logged in as a presenter, you're logged in as an attendee. Yes, you should be able to, but that's not how you're logged in currently. You're on, so obviously. Susan, on. Mike. Yeah, Susan, Susan, can you promote me to a presenter while we you, do the case? You were invited as a presenter. I want you to do one thing. Look in the top right corner of your computer uh -huh. do you, where you would minimize or maximize or exit out. Do you have yeah. like your icon there with it, your initials or your picture? To the left of that, you should have a drop down. No, probably because I came in as Todd Hurley. Okay. He's the IT, he's the IT guy here. In so you, but yeah. do you have a drop down there? Make sure it's, it's yeah. connected to state yeah. of Ohio yeah. and not to something else. Well, I mean, I, I, can, see I, can, see, I can see the office somebody's office looking out the window that yes you're, a, that's as an attendee you're as an attendee you needed to come in as a presenter i'm not sure what the issue is on your end i was um except that if you had in the invite you received you should be able to join um and connect as a presenter do you have microsoft teams on your computer yeah yeah Okay, no, again, like, on that screen, can you, is there a drop down next to your picture or your initial to where you would have um, multiple accounts or whatever, um, and you have to select state of Ohio. Okay, but he, he's in under Mr. Hurley. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I did not send an invite to Mr. Hurley because oh, he was not on the list. Here. Okay. 
But did you forward your invite to Mr. Hurley because he accepted it? Yeah, because he was our IT guy and he was setting us up the cameras and mics. Okay, okay, but you have to sign. You have to sign in as the person that the it was sent to. Okay. Get there. Hang on. Getting ready to come in again. You got us now? Not sure. Let me see. I don't see any other additional video. No, you don't. Susan, there's no way you can promote me from a attendee to a, when you go to my, like when I come in as an attendee to right click and say, make a promoter or promote me to a yes. presenter. There's no way to do that. You have to log in as the email that was sent to you as a presenter. That has to be set up before we start the live event. We cannot change it during, while well, after the live event has started. I want me to get out of the live event. We try. can't. We can't do that because that that's that. Then we end it. Then our board is over. We can't restart it. Well, um, can we? Let me ask this, Mr. Mr. Basso, what uh, were, were, you, were you or Mr. Plank, were your clients going to present documents that they need to put on the screen, or do we already have the necessary documents in our packet um, such that we could proceed with Mr. Basso and Mr. Plank's clients uh, with an audio only? Uh, Don, do you have anything that you're presenting on screen? Don Plank? Yeah, I don't know where he went. Mm -hmm. 
He's muted. Yeah, he's boys. On his screen, he's muted. On his phone, he's not. He's muted on the screen. He can unmute that. Here you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we got Mr. Pine. There he is. He's coming back. Hey, sorry. This is uh, this is Craig Moncrief here. Don, Don just came back. But to answer your question, the, the packet, I sent a zip file that should have everything um, that's needed. I don't know if, Melvin, if you think there's anything else that's needed. No, he does not have anything else that's needed. Okay, then I, I think we could probably proceed uh, on an audio basis. I mean, we have Mr. Planks interactive, and uh, you know, if we get to a point where it becomes uh, necessary to get you to be more interactive, Mr. Basso, we will, or Mr. Planks' clients who are with you, as I understand it. But let's let's give it a shot. Um, okay, I'm going to call uh, Sam. Let's go on the record, please. All right, the time is approximately 11.07 a.m. and we are back on the record. Okay, uh, good after or good morning, gentlemen. Uh, it's 11, it's 11.07. We're going to call the case that was set for 11 a.m. on our docket. It's, um, it's uh, case number 20-0010. Deals with uh, the premises known as Concord Fabricators located in Grove City and Grove City's adjudication number is noted. Uh, on the docket. Um, Mr. Plank, would you enter your appearance and then I'll ask your uh, your client and uh, other representatives to do the same. Uh, members of the board, my name is Donald Plank. I'm the attorney for the uh, property owner and applicant Concord Associates LLC. I think DBA Concord Fabricators. Okay, and uh, other representatives uh, that are actually are with Mr. Basso, as I understand it, uh, would you identify yourself, please? <laughs> Melvin Felt, the architect for the client. Uh, you, you were faint. You were faint on that. Could you say that one more time, please? Can you hold on one pl second, please? Mr. Bossler, do we still have you? Yeah. I got to plug in the speaker phone for your bell here. Okay. What's the number again? Conferencing center. Please enter conference ID followed by pound. 
To continue in English, press 1. Para español, seccione 2. You were 634, 584, 459, To continue in English, press 1. Para español, presione 2. Wow. Welcome to the Audio Conferencing Center. Please enter a conference ID followed by pound. To continue in English, press 1. With this number right here. Welcome to the audio conference. Susan, what's the conference ID number? You have it? Yes, 634-584-459 pounds. Let me double check it. Yes, 634-584-459 pounds. And the call in number is the uh, 614-721-2972. Correct. 614-721-2972. And then the conference ID number one more time, please. Is 634 584 Four five nine pounds. Yeah. Mike, try it on your cell phone. I don't have my cell phone with me. I left it at home. And press two for Spanish. Do something. And then I got. I'll 
Welcome to the Audio Conferencing Center. We enter a conference ID. Follow our team. 634 584. To continue in English, press 1. I don't know. It keeps interrupting every time we go to punch it in. I'm on Todd Hurley's phone and he's got to leave. Why don't you try continuing in English first and then input the the uh, conference ID? We did it twice. Yeah, we tried it twice and it didn't work. After we get six digits, then it comes back and says if you want to go in English. I thought yeah, Susie we said they were going to do a try to do a test with Grove City on Thursday. Um, well, let's let's. So what what Mr. Basso, what are you on right now? You're on Mr. Hurley's cell phone? Yes. Okay. I've got I have it. somebody coming in. I have someone right now. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and let them in. Hello? Yes. Come yeah, on, I'm, this is Gary Hamill. I got it on my phone. Good. OK, Good. let's uh, let's try to proceed. I have I do have a, a little bit of a time challenge, but let's uh, let's let's uh, proceed if we can. Um, Mr. Plank has entered his appearance. I've called the case um, and then I asked for uh, other uh, representatives of Concord fabricators to enter their appearance. Melvin Felty, architect for Concord fabricators. OK, that's Felty, uh, Sam. Uh, uh, next, can you spell that? F E L T Y, correct? Correct. Next, Gary Hamill, Concord Fabricators, owner, president. And Mr. Hamill, would you spell your last name, please? H A M M E L. Thank you. Anyone else on behalf of Concord Fabricators? No. Oh. No. no. OK, Mr. Basso. Uh, Mike Bosco, City of Grove City Building Division. He's building a visual. OK, uh, if each of you would, uh, other than Mr. Plank, stand, raise your right hand. Uh, Sam will administer an oath. Carl, I think the fire official was there too. Oh, OK, yeah. well, good, good point. Uh, go ahead and identify yourself, please. Fire Inspector Tammy Green, Jackson Township Fire Department. Thanks, Inspector Green. OK, now if uh, everybody but Mr. Plank would stand, raise their right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yeah, I yeah. do. OK, and then uh, just some housekeeping here. Mr. Basso, the appellants represented by counsel, you would have the right. Uh, the building department would be, could be represented by the city attorney uh, or other counsel. Um, and uh, so you'd have the, I mean, we'd, we'd allow you that opportunity unless you want to proceed without counsel. Yeah, I'm going to waive that right. OK, very good. Um, Mr. Plank, you have the floor. Yeah, if I might, um, and, I'll, and I'll be quick. Um, we filed a notice of appeal on May 19th, 2020. And in that notice of appeal, I attached what I call the nonconformance plan, the adjudication order. I want to make it clear that in that attachment, there were a number of items that showed non-compliance. Um, we listed five in my notice of appeal, of which we are um, not appealing, but seeking variances. All other items in that non-conformance plan will be um, complied with. Um, I have submitted um, the affidavit of Gary Hamill with the purpose of explaining his business and showing the condition of the property as is. I did it by affidavit because heaven knows something could happen in a presentation online. And so right. um, I do have the affidavit. It included some pictures that are important to be to, to, for an understanding of the, of the existing condition. Um, I did also provide the affidavit from Melvin Felty and the affidavit of Gary Beckman. Gary Beckman is not in attendance, but he is the um, contractor that gave us um, numbers in terms of what the cost of compliance would be. Um, and um, uh, Gary Hamill can speak 
to that uh, to that estimate. And with that, I, I think that um, my presentation, except for any questions in my head, is is completed. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hamill. Yes. I, I, I thought that he was handing off to you. Yeah, Gary, explain. Please explain uh, the business. And I don't know if it's if, if Susan, is it possible to get some pictures up on the on the um, exhibit? The, and this, those pictures would be attached to Gary Hamill's affidavit. We we have currently the floor plan, uh, actually the site plan uh, right. that shows the the building up right now. Yeah, I, I see that, and I think that gives you a good indication on, on the right hand side on the which would be the east side of that site plan is where the a, a enclosure is to take place. And as you look at the cross hatch, the current condition is that there is a roof, but there are no sides to the building on the north, east or south and on the west it's connected to the existing building. And, 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 and Gary, while they're looking for the pictures, could you explain your business and how you're using that area today? Yes, as we uh, presently have this, we built this building in uh, 2008. Well, we built it in 93, but we did some renovations in 2008. The east end of the building, which is this portion in question, is used for receiving and shipping of our material, which is structural steel beams and columns, different frames and uh, weldments that are sometimes large that uh, build uh, multi-story buildings. So the superstructure of uh, construct constructed buildings, hospitals and office buildings and such. And we uh, fabricate those items and we put those out into this area that is we call the east end of the building. Uh, it is open to the outside weather, but the crane, overhead crane, has a roof on it, and that's why it's covered. But uh, we load and unload trucks in this area right now, and the trucks are, are building this 60 foot wide, and the truck and the trailer together are 60 foot plus. And with that, we have put on a little bit of a lean to, so when we close this, we can possibly pull the truck in in the winter time and close both of the buildings, but both of the doors are both into the building. Uh, the, the, our type of construction and work, the men wear car hards, the, all but probably uh, January, February, the doors are open and closed. Uh, during the summertime, they're open all the time. Uh, spring and fall, they're open and closed. Uh, and open more than not uh, just for circulation of air and so on. So this area is open, but we want to, we're putting in a beam line on the opposite end of the building, and that beam line is gonna change the direction of our material flow. And this east end portion now will become a uh, finished uh, goods where material that is fabricated, welded, assembled, and will come out and be stored and well and put on trucks for shipment. So we would like to enclose this area uh, because the crane you see there, you can see our pictures, you'll see on that one picture there is a big frame coming out of the building. Right now there is a doorway kind of dividing this, but the crane has to pass above the door. And so there's a curtain up there, but so we're going to trying to close this in to just make it uh, better for our finished goods and uh, workability. So that's our purpose for this uh, enclosure. Is, is there any way to see any, uh, Susan, are there any way to see any of the other pictures? I'm going to defer. Paul is, uh, uh, Paul Began. Every, every, everybody, Everybody has the documents that you sent. Everybody has seen the pictures. I mean, if you need a particular picture up as part of the presentation, we can. It is not necessary for you to have every picture or every portion of your presentation appear on screen um, because we have them in our docket and they're already in as part of the record. So if there's a particular photo you would like us to 
uh, put up on the screen because it's integral to your presentation, um, then we can do that. If you just want us to scroll through the pictures on the screen, I don't think that's necessary. I'm, I'm fine with it at this point. Okay. But I think exhibit four also shows the, the, the ground and shows the truck inside. I think that helps get a perspective, a little bit better perspective of what the current condition. Other than that, to the extent that you have those pictures, I'm fine with that. Yeah, there, that's exhibit four there. Okay, that's exhibit four right there. Okay. Okay. And uh, so, go ahead. Melvin, if you could explain what, what we're trying to do. Okay, what we're trying to do is take the three sides of a building that are open, existing building, which is about 8,698 square feet. And on the north side, we're going to add a 15 foot by 150 foot long lean to addition, which are closed at the north end of the building. So now it'll be a winterized building. They can close doors. On the north side, be one door, 16 foot wide on the South side, there'd be a 21, 22 foot door that lines up with a 16 foot door and two other 16 foot doors on the west side of the east side of the. Yeah. And by putting the siding on the building and we're closing the snow just right below through, the will the full trucks all the way in, close the doors, full trucks. We use the same area for uh, lay down area for products that aren't ready to ready to ship and not loaded yet. And uh, that total project will be about 10,978 square feet of building. And the floor of the building will be gravel, is what we're proposing, using four 11 aggregate base gravel. Sam, you able to pick up Mr. Felty? Say again? Are you able to, well, no, I'm asking our court stenographer because you're the faint voice on the phone. You able to pick him up? My yeah. problem is I'm speaking through a mask and that's very difficult. It's a very thick mask. Gotcha, understood. Sam, you able, you okay? Yes. Thank you, okay. I'll try to speak slower and louder if that helps. I, I, he's got you. He, this is a, this is being audio uh, recorded, so uh, you're being picked up. Okay, Mr. Plank. Yeah, I, and Melvin, could you explain the the code sections and the variances that we're seeking, and and, and why we think we've um, and and how we came close to compliance, but just can't get there, and that's why the need for the variance. Okay, if you, if you were to refer to the corrective letter number two, Jesus. we're uh, asking variances on item number five, seven, 10, 15, and 16. Number five, seven, 15, and 16 all relate to accessible means of egress, which we cannot comply with with our situation. The uh, client requires a gravel floor in the shipping area, and that, that will not comply with the requirements. He, the does he require a gravel? Does he require a gravel floor? Or does he want a gravel floor? Well, uh, we because of the type of thing that we the material that we have in there, we we do not feel that. Uh, you know, to put a, put anything other than gravel in there, that's what we have now because it is for loading and unloading material and, and trucks pulling through. And these are tractor trailers, steel trucks with steel, with steel product on them. We have concrete in the rest of our shop, but this area here, uh, you know, there is no you know, necessity to put gravel in there. It's not going to serve any purpose. Other than that, the code requires it. Correct. Okay, I Northern just wanted Park. to. I, I just wanted to check because you know your your architect said that they require a gravel floor, and I just wanted to make sure that a gravel floor is not inter necessarily integral to your process, uh, but it is more of a desire than a 
uh, necessity for your processes. Right. It's yes. Okay, Mr. Hamlock and uh, or Mr. Felty, I think we cut you off. Or Mr. Plank, I think we may you may have asked that question. If you can continue, though. No, I, I would just add that the that's the gist of the application. Um, our proposal would be to put small concrete ODOT approved that actually compact to almost concrete, but when steel fabric falls, when we have our the 18 wheelers coming in, the the concrete would not sustain that over time. And that's why it, it makes sense, uh, economic sense and business sense that, that we uh, ask for these variances. Thank you. Um, all right, duly noted and, and the photos are in the record, uh, as you know, as well as the uh, drawings. Um, uh, Mr. Basso, hear from you oh, and or Ms. Green, Inspector Green. So I'm, I'm very, very familiar with their operation. Uh, they've been there for years. And, and like uh, the applicant said, you know, th th this is basically just the shipping. Once, once the material is done, it goes out into this area, the trucks pull in. They have a boom crane that loads these trucks and then they pull out. Uh, so there's not a whole lot of work that goes on here. Right now, this is just a yard. But they just want to enclose for storage of the materials for security reasons and just to keep people out of the weather when they are loading and unloading these trucks. That's all I have. OK, so uh, Grove City's not opposing a variance. I, I would be in support of the variance. I got you. Inspector? I'm in support. Um, over, over the years, We've never really had any kind of violations with the business. Okay. Um, hey, Don, you'd have the right to ask uh, either the CBO or the inspector any questions. I, I, I have. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Just, I, I have no questions of, of anyone. I, I do. I do want to point out that the one variance that we're seeking that does not pertain to the floor, um, the concrete floor, is the um, Ener International Energy Conservation Code. Um, and the, the reason for that request is simply that the only purpose for this enclosure is to actually um, make the, uh, the existing building more energy efficient because now we have something that blocks the winter weather. Um, but th for the most part, this area will be open. The garage doors will be open most of the time, except as Mr. Hamill said in uh, January and February when the weather gets too cold. But it's really intended to continue to operate as it has um, and still does, except for some security reasons and also um, and, and for some, um, um, some of the um, energy conservation reasons. But it will not be. Uh, it will not meet that energy conservation code because of, of how we're constructing it. Okay. Is uh, it going to be heated? Is the the enclosed addition going to be heated? Yes. Here, here. Okay. It, it will have uh, heat. That heat will probably only run for a couple weeks, or I mean a couple months out of the year. And uh, it's just to, uh, you know, keep it from sub temperature, you know. You know, insulation could do that too. Uh, mm -hmm. The building does pass the concept for uh, semi heated buildings. I'm sorry, you're going to have to repeat that. Yeah, you're fading in, Mr. Melvin. Melvin Zelty, the architect. Uh, we, uh, we submitted contracts which uh, show that the building passes the energy code. For lightly light heated buildings or semi heated buildings, so that that does pass that part of the energy code. And this is Don Plank. I would add that it's not going to be air conditioned. <laughs> okay. Uh, questions of members of the board of any of the parties or council. I do have one question, Mr. Chair. What 
what happens when these semi trucks bring the water in, uh, you know, after it's rained or there's been a downpour and you start getting water inside the building with a with a gravel floor? Uh, this is Gary Hamill. Uh, you know, that's part of the, it, we don't, there isn't that a large amount of uh, water that comes in on the trucks or whatever because the steel has already been in the building. It doesn't have any uh, snow or water on the steel. The only water that might be on, brought into the building might be what's dripping off of the truck. And uh, these trucks aren't coming in and out uh, minute by minute. A trailer may set in here for two or three hours. It's pulled out, another one's brought in. So, you know, these trailers aren't, you know, they're not coming and going all the time. So you don't have a, a big uh, influx of trucks and trailers coming through that are gonna continually bring a lot of uh, moisture into the building. Uh, whatever would come in there would be, uh, you know, minor uh, as it is right now. If you go out there now, the gravel is always very dusty. Um, very small amount of moisture gets brought in on the trucks. And that would only be when it's raining presently or uh, maybe some snow on the truck when it pulls in. But uh, the trailers that are in there will not be off of the road. The only truck, the only thing that could be off the road would be the tractor that pulls it through the far uh, east end bay. The far east end bay is the one that, where the tractors pull through. The other two doors to the west, the tractor backs in and uh, backs the trailer in and, and detaches from it and leaves it there so they can load it. Thank you. Uh, this is Brad, I have a, a comment. I just wanted to clarify that there are plenty of buildings that accommodate semi-traffic that have concrete floors as well as concrete parking lots that, you know, and actually roadway pavements made out of concrete that that support trucks. So, you know, it's that's, really not an issue uh it's the cost is an issue but the design of it is not an issue right. I, I agree that's why we provided the affidavit it's a it's it's a, a 100 close to a 100 thousand dollar additional cost uh, on a project that is estimated at 500 thousand so it's not an insignificant dollar amount can you tell me what that cost estimate was based based on as far as thickness of concrete? Um, that Gary, was, Gary? Yeah, that was a six inch uh, concrete slab, which is what is in the other portion of our building. So you're saying it's twelve dollars a square foot, approximately, to put in concrete floor? Yes, we we had that installed in the other part of our shop here, 